There's a massive rivalry now between Jamaica and America with regards to their male and female sprinters. Correct. Um, what do you think makes a great sprinter? A great supporting cast. I honestly think a great supporting cast makes a great sprinter. And he has to be mentally strong, of course, physically strong. But that's the easy part, the weight room and on the track. But I think he has to have a great supporting cast. Uh, An athlete, I can't say any names, but she said to me that she wished her supporting cast was better. And that rang a bell. And I was like, I'm so thankful to have my agent, you know, my coaches, um, and everyone who texts me and my family support and things like that. I think that makes a, a person and an athlete a, a better person. And do you think, like you said, with the supporting cast, that is something now in the sport that has been captured and learned over the years? Because before, many athletes worked in isolation. Right. But now they kind of like share the knowledge. Right. And do, do the American sprinters share the knowledge with the Jamaican sprinters? Do you have that kind of rep rapport? No, I don't think it's really no sharing information. You know, unless you hear some he say, she say. But I don't believe nothing I hear. You know, I hear people in my camp, other camps, say the Jamaicans do this and they do this, you know, but I just worry about what what we do, you know what I'm saying, in my camp. You know, I can't really worry about what someone else does. So do you think now this rivalry between the two countries, do you guys train to beat the Jamaicans? Do you do, is that kind of...? You have to. I mean, I, I hate to say it that way. You know, you want to train against the clock, train to run fast. But at the end of the day, if they're at the top of the pole, and that's where you're trying to be. You have mm. to train to beat them. It's, I mean, that's the only way you can look at it for, for the most part. Now, since Beijing, um, Hussein Bolt has sort of like taken the world sprinting beyond most people. Correct. And yourself has been very close to men. You, you know, you've been ducking and diving each other, but then you come together on a head to heads. Do you, how do you, how do you view Hussein? Um, He's he just a tough all-around athlete to beat. You know, I don't hang out with him much off the track, really never have. But as an athlete, he's just tough. You know what I mean? I, if I'm not mistaken, he went undefeated last year, if I'm not mistaken. So he's just tough. I mean, at the end of the day, and when he gets to the major championships, he steps up another level. So I think that's the difference between him and other athletes. He's going to be tough on the circuit, and then he's going to be even tougher at a major championship. So if you, if you take Tyson Gay and Hussein Bolt in isolation and you're standing head to head with him, what would go through your mind as how you're going to beat him? Um, just try to be aggressive and try to beat him to the 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. I mean, ain't no other way to beat him. It ain't no, I mean, that's a big tree to chop down, you know, so it's, it'll be very difficult. And if he gets out in front of you to the 30, to the 60, it's most likely a wrap. It's most likely done. It's not really nobody's going to run him down. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think the name of the game is you got to beat him from the beginning to the finish. There's not really no other option. And if you were to put yourself now as a coach and you're coaching somebody to beat Hussein, Bolt. Right. Would you kind of go to the manual and have a look, or do you throw the manual away and start again? Uh, both. I think both. You know, um, people say you can't really change the wheel, you know what I'm saying? But in a sense, he's, he's changed the game, you know what I mean? So I believe that I would first probably get him some, like some, some stilts, like some taller stilts, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Give him a few more inches. But <laughs> no, nah, I mean, it's. I mean, at the end of the day, he's what some people call a freak because he's six five, if I'm not mistaken, and he has the frequency of someone who's five nine. You know what I mean? And when you put them two together, that's a turnover and straddling. So it's very tough to beat. You know. By listening to your body now, is that helping you to prepare more mentally for what's ahead? I think so. I think so. And. I'm, I'm trying to work on my mental a lot better because when you come off of a surgery, it can play with your mind, you know, definitely a lot. And I'm definitely trying to stay positive. And, and like I said, my supporting cast has been helping me as well. I mean, my coach couldn't make it here. He's coaching the athletes at home, you know. But 
um, Art, who works with Global Athletics, who's my agent's assistant, he takes over the watch. You know what I mean? So I'm doing everything I can do possible to stay on top of my game. Having a six-hour photo shoot and interviews, and after that go to practice is tough. You know, and he made sure I done it. So my mind frame is still staying tough to um, reach my goals. Yeah. So having been one of the fastest athletes, and still, are, and you still are the one of the fastest athletes in the world, and looking on at your progression, what sort of help and advice would you give to young people joining, be it track and field or other sports? What sort of advice would you give them? I would say, you know, you have to have it up here first mentally. You know, it's so cliche to say, don't let nobody tell you what you can't do, go for your dreams, you know, but I say practice here first. Practice mentally believing, practice mentally telling yourself all positive things, practice mentally telling yourself you're going to win before the race, studying at a young age so when you get older and it's more difficult training, it's more difficult to run in front of thousands of people when the camera's on and the lights are flashing. If you train yourself and study for what you want to become, that'll make it a lot easier. That's what I would tell somebody younger. So uh, taking all that into consideration, what actually makes you tick? Um, what makes you behave any different when you're not training, when you're not competing? Not too much. I'm kind of that same person all the time. I mean, a lot of people. I've heard different coaches and different people tell me I need to be more aggressive. Not necessarily like boat with the shoulder stuff, but they said normally sprinters are more, uh, but I'm me still, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's me here. I can't really be somebody else, you know, and off the track, it's still me. I think I may be a little bit more funnier, you know, off the track, and I do my video games, and I, I, I like to crack jokes with my friends and stuff like that, but at the end of the day, it's, it's really nothing that gets me there, you know. Track is my world, you know, and once I'm on that track, I feel everything. So, but but just take it, take yourself out of a track and field situation and being with uh, your young daughter, how does that play out in a day? Um, for example, when I was at home for Christmas, track was still in my world because I bought her the 2012 Sonic Olympic Wii game. You know what I mean? And I mean, it's funny, but at the same time, I had fun playing the game and trying to beat each other. But she's she's running. You know what I mean? And. I'm kind of enjoying trying to start to make it to more of her meets, you know, stuff like that. My daughter's getting older now, so I do want to be a part of her life more when I come home from the breaks and when she comes to see me and stuff like that. It's not enough to me, you know. It's almost like she comes, watch me run, she understands what I do, but now it's more, more um, personal now. I'm looking at the relationship. It's more personal. How old is she now? Eleven. And is she critical at uh, when she sees any of your races? <sighs> Um, the only race I've heard to be critical about was the 09, I would say, you know, when I lost or whatever. Um, she um, basically, I mean, she knows the difference between winning and losing, you know what I mean? And she wants me to win next time, you know what I mean? Uh, what were her words to you? Um, she was proud of me, you know. They wanted to see my medal and stuff like that. But, you know, the facts remain the same kids understand they want to be the fastest and she wants me to be the fastest so I mean, she talks to me and stuff like that so she asked me can you beat Usain she asked me stuff like that I tell her yeah I mean who's gonna tell her daughter nah you know so I tell her yeah you know so I mean that's things that she does but she's understanding because she going to school and little girls friends ask her hey your father this you that you know so um everything is it's a little bit different now and does she ever come to the track while, while you're training and give you some advice? Nah, she don't give me any <laughs> advice, but she has came to watch me train before. You know, I think it's a little bit boring to her. You know, sometimes she does her little flips and watches and she's, it, times have changed now with little kids. I know it may sound weird, but now they have the, the iPads and now at a young age and she's into the electronics and the, all that type of stuff now.